Hello everybody, this is Mr. Burns' story time. Today we're going to read The Name Jar, written by Yang Suk Choi. Through the school bus window, Yun Hai looked out at the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day and she was both nervous and excited. She fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Yun Hai's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name, Yun Hai had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Yun Hai, surprising her. Yun Hai looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it, it's mine, Yun Hai answered, quickly putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Yun Hai, said Yun Hai. Oo the girl asked, scrunching up her face. Oo 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 some kids chanted. No, no, uh, Unhai corrected. It's spelt U N H E I. It's pronounced Unhai. Oh, it's you, hey, the boys said. Like you, hey, what about hey, you? Just then, the bus pulled up to the school and the doors opened. Yun Hei hurried to get off. Yun Hei, bye bye, the kids yelled as she left. Yun Hei felt herself blush. Yun Hai stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to an other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? Asked a curly haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? He, he, he asked cheerfully. Yun Hei nodded and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's the new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Cocotus, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Cocotus thanked him and greeted Yun Hei. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Yun Hei smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Yun Hei pictured the kids on the bus. Mm, I haven't picked one yet, she told the class, but, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Cockatoss showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper. Maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Yun Hai kept thinking about her name. How was school, Yun Hai? Her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Yun Hai simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you are learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely and get good grades to show that you are a good Korean. I will replied Yun Hai. But, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. 
Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Yunhei is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it, it's so hard to pronounce, Yunhei complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Yunhei, her mother said. That's a good thing. Yunhei just wrinkled her nose. Later that day, Yunhai and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighbourhood. They passed Fadil's falafel, Tony's pizza and Dot's deli. A big graffiti painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's market. The sign was both in English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, Korean style spicy pickled cabbage and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Yun Hai's favourite for soup. It made Yun Hai smile. Just because we've moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Yunhai. Helping your mother with the shopping? he asked. Yunhai nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. And what is your name? Yunhai, she answered. Ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean grace? Yunhai nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it. She told him, a graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put the groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighbourhood, Yunhai. That evening, Yunhai stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm... Maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. <sighs> I don't think American kids will like me. She worried as she began to brush her teeth. Hi, my name is Juicy, she said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning, when Yunhai arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Yunhai took one out and read it aloud. Daisy. That's my baby sister's name, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who was sat next to her. Yunhai took out the rest of the paper. Tamila, she said. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Yunhai nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help. A smile spread over Yunhai's face. Ralph quickly said, We'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like or pick them all or you'll have the longest name in history. <laughs> At three o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Yunhai looked out of the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Yunhai turned around to see the curly-haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said. And you? Don't you have any name? Yunhai thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me in Korea. I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper 
Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey, and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Yunhai said. And then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day, the jar got fuller with more names, and Yunhai read them all. She found a few names she liked. Uh, Miranda, Stella, Avery, they sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snap time. I've put in three more, said Ralph, Madison Park and Lex. They're my favourite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well, we didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. When Yunhai got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, to my Yunhai, I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here the moon is up, but there the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are and no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my Yunhai, your grandma forever. Yunhai took out her wooden stamp and filled the paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Yunhai walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Yunhai. Hello, Mr. Kim, Yunhai replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer, turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Unhi? He asked her with his eyes wide open. Yunhai looked quickly at Mr. Kim, then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. Yes, it's pronounced Yunhai, and it means grace. Mr. Kim added. Yunhai, Joey, Joey said slowly, and this time perfectly. It made Yunhai smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, Yunhai, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. On Monday, Yunhai came to class early to look at the names one last time. But the jar wasn't on the desk. Instead, there was just a single piece of paper. Paper with a name on it. Yunhai slipped it into her pocket. Where's your name jar? Ralph asked as soon as he saw it, it was gone. I don't know, Yunhai said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokoto's desk or on any other desk and it wasn't on the counters of any shelves. As the other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon, Mr. Kokotas came in and Ralph shouted at him. The, the name jar is gone. The, the jar with all the names in it. Gone, Mr. Kokotas replied. With a look of concern, he asked Yunhai, did you get chance to read all the names? Yunhai nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Yunhai wrote her name in both English and Korean on the chalkboard. I like the beautiful names and funny names you thought of for me, she told the class. But I realised that I liked my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something, Yunhai. Means grace. Grace. Grace in high, shouted Ralph. 
Everyone tried to say it. Yun hai yi, un yi, un hai. Yun hai said her name again, slowly and clearly. Soon, the kids began to say it better. Even Mr. Kokotas, they applauded Yun hai's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Yun hai. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokotas reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Yun Hai heard her new friends say goodbye. Bye, Yun Hai. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Yun Hai. Yun Hai said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Yun Hai, Yun Hai, come downstairs. Mother called up to Yun Hai. Your friend is here. Yun Hai rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Z Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where, where did you find it? asked Yun Hai breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Mm, well, I, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name, and, and you did. <laughs> he reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? he asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir, Yun Hai said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Yun Hai. I've already got a Korean name, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it into the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Chikyu, read Yun Hai. That means friend. And Chinku smiled back. And that's the end.